this. And I hope everyone had a fun and safe New Year's celebration this year. Not that I want to necessarily quote Kylie Jenner, but 2016, for me at least, was the year of like realizing stuff, you know? And it was a it was a transitional year in my career and my education and me as a human being. It was a crazy year. So I'm going to break down everything that happened to me in the past year, good and bad. Maybe it'll help you feel better about your year, or maybe you can relate to me on a few things, because it's been an odd year. So yeah, gonna go month by month, and we'll see how it goes. So last January, I got my first tattoo, and I've always wanted tattoos. My mom does not want me to have tattoos or facial piercings or to tie my hair or do anything like that. But I got my first tattoo last January, and it is this one right here. And it says be kind because you should always be nice to people, you know? You know? And I didn't necessarily get it as like, everyone else has to be kind because I'm already kind enough. It's a reminder to myself to always be kind and to be kind to everyone you meet. Because everybody has a story, everybody is dealing with all of their own lives, so just... Be nice to people. In February of 2016, my boyfriend and I had the opportunity to go and see the 1975 on a rooftop and it was a secret show and nobody knew about it and there were only like 150 people there. This show was for Apple Music and it was insane. So a week after that concert, the 1975 released their new album, I Like It When You Sleep, For You're So Beautiful That So Unaware Of It, and the album shook my life. Like, oh my god. <laughs> my boyfriend and I met a few years ago, essentially over the 1975, and ever since we met in 2014, the 1975 has been a pivotal point in our relationship and they mean so much to the both of us. I have the box set for the new album, I have I have all of the EPs that they've released, I have all of the vinyls, and they own my life, really. So in March of 2016, I got my first design internship at a packaging and branding company and it was by far one of the hardest jobs I've ever had in my life but I learned a lot. In April of 2016, I went to a second 1975 show at Shrine Auditorium in LA with my boyfriend and two of our close friends. And that was pretty great too. That was their first uh, stop on the US tour. In May of 2016, I got my second tattoo, which is this kitty right here. And I do get a lot of questions and comments like, oh, you're the girl with the cat tattoo. And I'm like, yes, that's me. I like cats. Um, a lot of people ask me why I have a cat tattoo, like, especially so prominent, like, on the front of my body. Because I can. Because it's my body, and I can do whatever I want. In June of 2016, I graduated from FITM with my associate's degree in graphic design. At the end of June in 2016, I was reposted by Colourpop on Instagram. And it's ironic to me because I'm terrible at makeup. At the time, they had like a 3 million uh, follower count, and I was like, oh, what? Like, my Instagram account at the time only had like 500 followers, and so I started getting like a lot of attention to my Instagram account, and that had never happened to me before. And then something really bizarre happened. It started this flooding of questions comments and DMs and people reaching out to me in every manner they could possibly do to ask where I got my glasses and <laughs> it's it's weird because I had different I had different glasses at the time I had they were still Ray-Ban but they were the glasses I had for like the previous year to that and they were really fragile and I kept breaking and I was slowly getting over the glasses and when I got reposted Everyone was like, oh my god, where did you get your glasses? Your glasses, 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 glasses. And so everyone wanted to know where I got my glasses. And they're Ray-Ban. I don't know if they still sell them. Um, yes, they are prescription lenses. I've worn glasses for a very, very long time. And they eventually broke over the summer and I had to get new ones. And that's how I got these. They're still Ray-Ban. They're still prescription lenses. Please stop asking. In July of 2016, I quit my first design job. 
In August of 2016, I moved from the studio I had been living in for the past year and a half out and I moved into a really crappy apartment kind of by USC and I only stayed for a day when I learned of a massive roach infestation and it was a really cheap apartment and it was very last minute and I because I couldn't find an apartment and so I ended up moving into this one and I got so stressed out that I ended up in the ER because of the amount of stress that this apartment had caused me because of the amount of roaches that were in it where the location was it wasn't a good <laughs> neighborhood um, and it was it was just it wasn't a good apartment so I I moved there and I promptly moved out, but I didn't have a place to move out to. So I lived in a hotel for a week with my cat. I only had Harry at the time. So I lived with Harry in a hotel, and the same week I started a new job out in Culver City. And if you know the geographics, the, how LA is laid out, downtown is in the one part of LA and Culver City is really far away from downtown LA and so I stayed in a hotel out by Culver City because I was starting this new job out, out there and I eventually moved back to the building I'm in now, moved into this unit and oh boy was that stressful so yeah I moved twice in two weeks and one of those weeks I was homeless in a hotel with the cat. In September of 2016, I adopted little Gus. And if you follow me on Instagram, I have posted a few things about him on why he's a special little flower. And Gus was found in a storm drain outside of the grocery store in downtown and a guy had picked him up and he was looking for someone to adopt this cat. And I was like, I can't, I can't pass up this little itty bitty kitten who you know, doesn't have a home, and I knew that Harry needed a friend to hang out with all day when I'm gone, and so I I took Gus into my home, and he has been quite a light in my life. So you can check out my post on Instagram if you want to read more about why Gus is so special. In October of 2016, I for the first time fell on my skateboard incredibly hard. And I, prior to that, I'd only been skating for like maybe a month and a half, but I picked it up relatively well and it's a really great way for me to get around because I don't have a car. And I was like, yeah, dude, let's, let's learn how to skateboard. And my boyfriend taught me and the day he taught me, I was like, we're going and buying a board right now. And I did. So. This is my skateboard. It is an active board. I built it in um, Burbank at the active skate shop in there. And I, do, I did turn the wheels inside out, but I kind of want to turn them back because they have like these Hot Wheels designs on the inside. So I kind of want to flip them back around. But so I got my, my skateboard and one day I was skating to work and a dog did a thing, like a lady had a dog on a leash, and the dogs don't like skateboards, if you don't know that, they really lose their mind when they hear a skateboard on like concrete. And so this little yippy rat dog, like, lunged, and I had my headphones in and I wasn't like paying attention, and so I was like skating to work, and this dog jumped on me and so like I went to like go around it and I looked back to see like where the dog was because it was on a really long leash and I went my front wheel went just into this like hole in the ground where like a, a light used to be like a light in the sidewalk it was just a hole now and so my wheel went into that <laughs> and how NASA would say it I was launched and re-entry was going to be rough and I hit the ground so hard and it wasn't even like on my hands and knees I think it was like my slightly suicidal subconscious that was like don't try and I hit the ground on my face like my hands didn't get scratched at all my elbows didn't get scratched nothing my knees did get a little 
scraped. Um, but that, like, it wasn't that much, but the damage was all on my face. And I hit the ground so hard, I hit my head so, like, it, I was, like, I just, I couldn't hear anything. And so I hit my forehead, um, and I hit my nose, and I hit my upper lip, and my lower lip on the inside of my lip, the outside of my lip. And I just laid on the ground after I fell, and I was just like, wow, that really hurt. <laughs> and I remember like looking up and like seeing the lady who had the dog on the leash just like walking away like she had no idea that I just like was launched like 10 feet off of my skateboard that was going pretty fast. So I called my boyfriend and I was like, this is what happened. And so he came and picked me up and we went to the urgent care to make sure like I didn't need any stitches in my lip or in my, in my head, and also to do a concussion test because I got quite a spitter when I hit the ground. So, yeah, I fell on my skateboard for the first time hard. <laughs> At the end of October, in the same month that I fell on my skateboard, I got fired from my design job, and I will make another video on that, but I was fired in a wrong manner. I was fired for no reason in my opinion and it really destroyed me like because I cared about that job a lot and I was fired under f false accusations of who I was and um, it really took a it took a toll on like my confidence as a designer and as like a human being just from what I was told I was being fired for and I was fed lies about myself that I knew weren't true. So yeah, after that I took a few weeks off and I laid in bed all day. I was really <laughs> depressed because I felt that like a piece of me had been destroyed because of this job. In November of 2016, I started at the job I am at now and it's a company called Zero Gravity and we design fun cases like this bad boy. So you should go check us out. I'll leave all of our information in the description box below if you would like to go learn more about what I do all day. <laughs> At the end of November in 2016, Donald Trump was elected to be the next president of the United States. And this is a topic that is especially sensitive to me because I hate you, Donald Trump. I do. I don't hate really anyone. But I hate you, Donald Trump. So, I remember watching TV when Donald Trump was really pulling ahead in the election, on election night, and I was thinking there was no way that this, that there's no way he could possibly actually win this, because that means he beat out Hillary Clinton. And Hillary Clinton beat out Bernie Sanders, and Bernie Sanders was my man. And I really, really wanted him to win. We could have had it so good. We could have had it so good. December of 2016, I really started getting into YouTube, and I found a love for filming and a love for video editing and content curation more than just a social media and it's a platform that I have never really dabbled in and so so far it's gone pretty well and I really appreciate everyone who has subscribed to my channel and who has watched my videos and left comments and liked them and I thank you I thank you for that because that's really cool because you didn't have to do that you could have just skipped over my video and moved on with your day so, yeah, that was my 2016. It was a really bizarre, weird year. And yeah, it was a year of realizing stuff. Realizing that, you know, I, I learned that I can take control over my life. And when I do take control over my life, I have a higher hope that I can achieve my dreams of doing what makes me happy. And another thing that came out of 2016 was the idea of showing kindness to everyone you meet and loving people and being compassionate. We need it now more than ever 
And I don't want to be like cliche, but like we do need love and compassion more than ever right now. So be kind to everyone you meet. Show some love today and tomorrow and the next day and for the rest of your life. So yeah. Thank you so much for watching my 2016 year in review. Um, I hope you guys had a decent year. I hope it wasn't too bad for a lot of people. Um, but hang in there. 2017 is coming full swing. And hopefully it's kinder to us than 2016 was. So thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Leave a comment if you'd like. Leave a like if you'd like. And I will see you guys next week. Bye.